Hey everybody, Dirty Dan here. So, today, um, we've got a little special video. So, at the request, well, this wasn't really a request, but I figured I'd do it anyways. Um, buddy Lackawanna Rail fan, Tyler, awesome guy, go check out his channel now. Uh, he's, um, pretty epic. He does a lot of Lackawanna stuff, but he really likes my Bowser K4, which I honestly think is one of the most well-made K4s ever made. Um, Bowser did an amazing job with these, um, and it's also a beautiful locomotive, I have not touched the paintwork except for shine up the bells. They had been or the safety uh, safety valves and the whistle. I don't, I don't mean bell. The bells right here. Jeez. Um, but I believe this is a pre-war paint scheme. If you look very close, the um, the uh, smoke box is actually a different color than the boiler. I, I'm pretty sure this is a pre-war paint scheme, but I, I'm not a hundred percent sure. But my favorite part about this locomotive is just how durable these are. Although the detail is not the most amazing, I actually can't can say that for the rods. The rods are very detailed. Um, like, I just, the function of them is quite amazing too. But yes, they did a very good job on the rods with these. Um, but whoever painted this did an amazing job and it looks awesome. But apart from that, it runs pretty damn good too. And it can pull a lot of cars. So... I've compared this to my Bachman K4, which is quite similar, except it's it's, it's a um, post-war paint scheme, and the valve gear is slightly different. That one is does not have as much pulling power, but it's quite similar in design, um, except for it has a plastic shell. This has a die-cast metal shell and a die-cast tender, um, which, yep, this tender is metal. Um, tastes like literal brick of metal, and it's pretty cool. Um, but I've always wanted to have one of these locomotives. Got this a while ago, um, in a trade deal with, I believe, Jack. Uh, um, I don't even remember if, if he traded this to me. But, yeah, I got this a while ago. And the sad thing is, is that the motor actually has some issues to it. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to replace the motor within the next couple years. It's probably going to go out. The problem with it is, is that the, the armature was overheated at some point, And the spring and the brushes and the whole armature is a little baked. And it looks like it does not have, it just doesn't have it anymore. Although the locomotive still runs just fine, except for it has trouble starting. But that is something that's going to have to be dealt with in the future. I'm going to have to replace the motor probably. Um, and I'm going to put an original motor in it. I'm not remotoring this. Um, same with um, any locomotive. I don't like remotoring stuff unless it's necessary to get it, lo uh, to get it actually working. Um, if I can get an original motor, I will always get an original motor. Uh... But anyways, enough about the actual locomotive itself. Um, I think it's about time we hop out of the running action. But um, I actually want to mention a couple more things. Um, this back truck actually has a spoke. It's a spoke spoke wheel. Um, it's pretty interesting. And when you get when you look at it when it's up and running, it doesn't even look like there's some um, spokes on it. It's pretty neat. Um, but I'll just give you guys a better look at the model. It's just such a beautiful locomotive. For how old this locomotive is, it's truly, truly a nice locomotive. Highly recommend getting one of these if you ever see one. I actually saw a guy the other day, he has 50 of them. That's, I'm not even kidding. But, this is just a testament to how good Bowser locomotives are. Bowser locomotives are amazing. Bowser is somewhat still in business to this day. And I believe you need parts for these, they actually do still sell them. I don't think they make them, but I'm not 100% sure I could be wrong. But, that being said, I actually figured I would mention the Bowser 210, 210 and the 442, those are both currently mid-restoration. They are about to get painted. Um, the 442 is missing quite a considerable amount of parts, and the 210 just has a lot of issues that need resolved. So, in all, they just need a lot of work. But, most importantly, they need repainted. Um, the paint has been stripped off of both of them, they've been completely rebuilt, and now it's about time that just the paint needs to go on. And then things can be put back together, and they'll be good to go. Except for the 442, I need to get more parts for the 442, but other than that, pretty much, pretty much that's it, and then it'll be done. So, um, that's about it for this locomotive and the 210 and the 442. So, without further ado, I'm actually gonna run this for you guys now. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed um, the little beginning of this video, and enjoy the running shots.